Heavenly Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful fellowship, for all the married people here, and those that are learning about marriage. We ask you, Lord, that you pour out your wisdom unto us, that we may receive wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Guide us, direct our steps. Speak to us, O oh Lord. Transform our marriages. Change us. Conform us to your image, Father, that we may be, bear the true image of Christ in our marriages in our homes. In the mightiest name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, wonderful. As we like to begin, uh, anybody with uh, an expectation for today's meeting or a topic you want us to handle today? Uh, expectation, question, uh, topic, particular topic that uh, is on your mind that you want us to discuss? Anybody? Please feel free. Feel, please feel, feel free to, to let us know. Anybody? Mm. Hallelujah. Any questions? Oh, not me, blessed senior bishop. All right. Maybe somebody else wow. with a question or um or a certain point you want to you want us to discuss. You may type it. Uh, feel free to type it, and then I can read it out in case, for whatever reason, you are not able to say it. Amen. All right. Uh, if that is, uh, if nobody has a question or point that or expectation for today, then uh, the second thing is uh, for us to share what has the Lord been teaching you. What have you been learning concerning uh, the the calling of marriage? What has the Lord been teaching you? What has the Lord been teaching you? Amen. What has the Lord been teaching you? Hallelujah. Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, please. Yes, I would, I would love to share what the Lord has been teaching me, especially I want to weigh in on the last uh, fellowship topic. Yes. On the covenants. Mm -hmm. And um, I have learned that uh, the covenant is uh, it's an agreement. Mm -hmm. And uh, that agreement cannot be broken. And if you broke it, there are consequences that follow yes. you breaking that covenant. Mm -hmm. And uh, we now also believe that marriage is a covenant. And as a covenant, you would decide to break it. They are consequences. Amen. 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 Very true. It is a covenant that cannot be broken, that must not be broken. And the Lord God has detailed uh, the consequences for breaking such a covenant, for breaking the covenant. Amen. Yes, uh, that it is a very, very, very solemn uh, agreement. In fact, in, in the Lord's dealing with the church, dealing with Israel, dealing with us, he always makes covenant with us. And, uh, and as we said last time, uh, you make the covenant to your own hurt to keep it, uh, even if it means um, that uh, it is going to hurt you. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you so much, um, Senior Overseer Patricia. Anybody else would like to share with us what the Lord has been teaching you so that we also learn from what the Lord has been teaching you? Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Senior Pastor Jacqueline. <laughs> Amen. So uh, she has said. Yes. 
uh, your mic is off now, please. Ah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so mine is a question. Yes. Because I've seen that uh, some people have, uh, if it's a covenant that we should not break. So I've seen cases where people are divorced and uh, they come back to the to the church and they even get uh, new partners and the, the new marriage is blessed and even they do a wedding. Yes. So uh, what is this? Because the Bible also says that people should not break their marriages. Mm -hmm. It's a covenant that uh, should go a long way until death do, uh, do people part. Yes. But nowadays I see even, uh, you see that somebody was married uh, shortly after the person is divorced and they remarry again and they, they even the new marriage is blessed. So uh, mm. I don't understand uh, how this goes. Could you please uh, clear the air on this matter? Especially here in Europe, people marry even in the church. I see it, it's, it's, uh, it's not uh, something new. We see it happening. Mm. Amen. Uh, that's a very serious one, senior pastor. Jacqueline, and uh, right, and, and indeed, uh, these are what people. This is what people are doing uh, in Europe, indeed, and even over here in Africa, uh, we have uh, a lot of such cases of people divorcing and then uh, marrying again somebody else. Let me just share my, uh -huh. and then marrying somebody else, and then going to church to have their weddings blessed. That's a very, very, uh, so, so two questions actually come out from your question. Why are people breaking the covenant and remarrying? And why is the church blessing the new marriages? In, uh, in, in, in us trying to uh, grasp, grapple with this uh, question, this very, very pertinent question, I'd like us to turn to the book of Malachi chapter 2 and... Uh, we read this in Malachi chapter 2 last time we met here. We met this and also the book of uh, Matthew chapter 19. We also looked at Matthew 19. All right, let me read for us here. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Has not the one God made you, you belong to him in body and spirit. And what does the one, and what does, uh, can everybody see now? Yes. Amen. So the Lord asks here, has not the Lord one, has not the one God made you, you belong to him in body and spirit. And what does the one God seek? Godly offspring. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. The man who hates and divorces his wife, says the Lord, God of Israel, does violence to the one he should protect, says the Lord Almighty. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful. And then uh, we go to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. I read from verse 3. Sorry for my highlights here. If you cannot see well the words of, the, of, of Jesus in red. Okay, I'll just read for us from verse 3. Some Pharisees came to him to test him. They asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the creator made them male and female? And said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Verse 8, Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard, but it was not this way from the beginning. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality and marries another woman, commits adultery. The disciples said to him, if this is the situation between a husband and wife, it is better not to marry. 
Jesus replied, Not everyone can accept this word, but only those to whom it has been given. For there are eunuchs who were born that way, there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others, and there are those who choose to live like eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. The one who can accept this should accept it. And uh, so the, the first question was, why are people divorcing? Uh, why are people breaking the covenant that we are not to break? That the Lord warns us very, very uh, clearly throughout scripture that if we break it, then uh, if we are unfaithful to our covenant, then he, will, he remains faithful for he cannot deny himself. But we see that the reason that cuts across that cuts across every reasoning, um, as Christ says here, for any and every reason. And then giving the, 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 the platform here called that except for sexual immorality. You see that all, whenever people uh, break the covenants, they really do it out of faithlessness, lack of faith. Because there are a lot of things attached to that. Um, a lot of things, including um, unpreparedness in Europe, even here in Africa, really, you find people, they just jump into marriage. They just go in 140, not realizing that if you, if you are not careful and you go in 140, you will come out 140. If you go into marriage carelessly and uh, without taking care to prepare carefully, and seek the help of the Lord, and seek the guidance of the Lord, then with the same wisdom you went in is the same wisdom that will be removing you. So there is faithlessness that really began way before the wedding began, where people took matters into their own hands, relied on their own wisdom rather than the Lord. And Jesus said that the reason why they are divorcing is because the hardness of the heart. Um, they do not want to be patient. They do not want to solve the conflicts. Some of them, are, they think that um, there's green grass on the other side. There's greener grass on the other side, not knowing that the grass is only greener on the other side because other people are taking care of their grasses. And so unless you take care of your grass, no one will take care of your grass. And so they are chasing a sort of fulfillment, a sort of um, dream that is elusive. And, and some of them are, are looking for somebody that is perfect when they themselves are not perfect. And others are waiting, are looking for somebody to perfect them, which is not the goal for marriage. And uh, a lot of people have no real understanding of the reason for marriage. So there are a lot of things involved. And at the heart of that is faithlessness. Faithlessness. The situations are different. They are varied. Uh, we cannot manage to go through all of them, but there is a lack of faith and a lack of trust in the Lord, which is why the apostle said that if we are faithless, the Lord does not, the Lord remains faithful because it's only faithlessness that leads to people to break their covenant, the covenant that they have made be, uh, between themselves and also with the Lord. The church too, uh, unfortunately, has... Um, bought into the lies of the enemy and the church has clearly walked away from the ways of the Lord, which is why we have the two mightiest prophets of the Lord preparing the church for the coming of the Messiah by restoring the altar of the Lord because the churches, apart from just breaking up marriages, the churches sometimes they have also uh, perpetuated uh, to, to begin marriages that are not founded on the right foundation. Yeah, They make they, they, they lead people into marriage in, in, in a way that is not uh, God-honoring. So there's a lot, lot of faithlessness. There's a lot of uh, lack of fear of the Lord, as we said last time, that uh, people break their covenants because they don't fear the Lord. And same goes with the pastors. We have pastors now trying to redefine the gospel, trying to redefine the word of God because they feel like the word of God is not modern enough to conform to the... Uh, the lifestyle of modern of postmodernism, which is really the lie from the devil. Um, so I, I can say that 
at the heart of it is lack of faith, lack of the fear of the Lord, and people pursuing self-gratification, seeking their own pleasure rather than seeking God's will, rather than seeking uh, uh, the leadership of the Lord in their marriages, in their lives. And, and really, a lot of marriages are built on the wrong foundation, very, very shaky foundation, which we see in the book of Matthew chapter 7, uh, which is why when the storm came, they are not able to, to resist. They are not able to stand strong, to persevere, because the foundation to begin with is already faulty. So it cannot handle even the smallest of storms. I'm not sure if that uh, has attempted to answer the question, Senior Pastor Jacqueline. Yeah, you've, you've answered. You've answered it. Mm, you bless Amen. the Lord. Amen. Mm. <laughs> if I can mm. go to Matthew chapter 7 there, uh, and verse 24, uh, you see that when, when the builders went out to build, really that can define a lot of things. It defines our Christianity, how we are building our Christian salvation. And also marriage also finds itself there, that um, what foundation are we building our marriages? Is it on the, on the word of God? Are we building it on the word of God according to how God instituted marriage in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2? Or is it according to our own ways? Uh, and so, and the, and the answer sadly is a lot of people today, even in the church, sadly, have built their marriages on the foundation of the world, not on the foundation of God. Yes. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, anybody else with, uh, with something to, uh, with a question or anything? Question, yes, question to say, to ask or any contribution? If not, then uh, we start with uh, the five love languages. Amen. The five languages of love. What are the five love languages? Uh, do we, do we, are we all acquainted with the topic of the five love languages? No. All right. So, um, it has been defined that there are five love languages which has to do with, which are concerned with uh, love in, in marriage. What does that mean? That when you look at a lot of conflicts that couples go through, that couples uh, uh, experience in their marriages, um, welcome sister, welcome sister Triza Adiambo from Saudi, Saudi, yeah? welcome Zita. Thank you for coming. Uh, when, um, when you look at a lot of conflicts that couples are involved in, indeed, uh, from Ephesians chapter 5, you find that the, the, the Bible commands that the man may love his wife and the woman may respect her husband, but also vice versa. We are both commanded to respect one another, to honor one another, and to love one another. Amen? And then the the practical aspect of that love is often where we, we, we struggle, where a lot of couples struggle. And, um, and so you find people are, in are, in are married and they don't feel loved. Yeah? They have so many conflicts, which is part of marriage, which is uh, a normal experience, normal experience, nothing unusual about that. Yes, from Bahrain. Teresa from Bahrain, welcome. Uh, so, so the conflict is normal in marriage, yeah, because that's how we learn to, to grow as a couple, to grow in, in all areas of our lives, to align our goals, our purpose, and um, to build our communication, our intimacy. Really, and, 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 a, and a marriage without conflict is meaning, means there is, no, there is no communication. Yes, it means there is no communication. And that's almost always true, 99.9999999% true that uh, if there is no communication then there will be no conflict but if there is communication there will be conflict and the problem is not that there is conflict the problem often is how that conflict is resolved amen and so and so people are married 
they feel unloved because of so much conflict and uh, everybody's right in their own ways and 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 they and they feel unloved they feel like this this man does not love me the, the man feels like the, this woman does not uh, respect me and usually the the thing the game changers in marriage are not big grand things yeah the game changers are usually not big monumental uh, events it's the the small you know uh, daily day to day things how we respond to one another how we treat one another the small little things that we do uh, in our marriages those are the things that transform our marriages um how you open the door for your spouse uh, cooking for your spouse of course all these practical things uh, how you listen to your spouse, how you speak and uh, comment your, your spouse's dressing and everything else, all these small things that sometimes look inconsequential, they build uh, and they make our spouses feel loved. Whether you go to the shop and buy the milk that your spouse is asking you to go and buy, or whether you're willing to listen to your spouse when she gives her concern concerning the electricity bill, water bill, whatever bill, all those small things, they eventually amount to a huge, um, a huge transformation in marriage. And so there are five areas called the five love languages, which when somebody, when, 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 when a spouse does it to their spouse, when a husband does it to the wife, when the wife does it to the, to the, to the, to the husband, the spouse feels loved. Not that uh, when these things are not done, the spouse, the, the people do not love one another. No, it's just the way we are, we are created. Uh, the way we are created is such that um, if the spouse seems to not be doing things that make you feel loved, then you really think that this person does not love you. And the, and, and the issue often is sometimes we do our best to love our spouses as best we know how by doing the things that we know that we like, but then sometimes the things that we like are not the things that our spouses like. Yeah? For example, uh, okay, we'll get into the example after I mention the names of the, the, the different five love languages. And one of the area is, of uh, the five love languages is called um, gifts giving or gifts receiving, receiving gifts, yeah? Receiving gifts. And, and obviously by definition, love is giving, isn't it? Uh, I, I, I misspelled here. Receiving gifts. And then uh, the other one is words of affirmation. The third one is uh, physical touch. I'm not mentioning them in any particular order. And then we have, um, please help me out. Receiving gifts, words of affirmation, physical touch, and uh, quality time. Quality time. And what's the fifth one? Receiving gifts, words of affirmation, physical touch, quality time. And the fifth one, my notes are a little bit missed. Uh, Act of service. Yes, that's it. That's it. I don't know how that escaped my mind. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pastor. <laughs> Pastor Jacqueline. Yes, acts of service. That's it. So, so these are concerned with how you feel loved. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so that's why they are divined as the five love languages of receiving, of receiving love. And, and if you, you can also flip it on the other side. And they can also become the five love languages of giving. Yeah? The ones that define. So whereas the, the five love languages of reception, of receiving, define what makes you feel loved. Of receiving. This is what makes you feel loved. By your spouse. In other words, what you want your spouse to do, to do for you in order for you 
to feel loved by him or her. Yeah. And then the five love languages of, uh, the, then the love language of giving is what you do that makes you feel a sense of purpose and usefulness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And usefulness. All right. So let us begin with, uh, with, with uh, let's say, receiving gifts. Okay, let us start with receiving gifts. But before I start this, before I start with receiving gifts, I want to say this, that when you look at the five love languages, when you, when you zoom out a little bit, when you zoom out a little bit, you realize that the five love languages are actually tied to our expectations. Hallelujah. Expectations. The five love languages, the love languages are tightly related to our expectations. And when we talk about expectations,